Well, we're playing with the milling machine again. Has some discussion about the y-axis travel on this machine. And I said I didn't think originally that it was the fully advertised travel. And I still don't believe that it is. Uh, brought to my attention that it may not be quite as big an issue to fix part of that as I originally thought. And I thought we'd take a look at it today. So let me move this down here so that you can see kind of what I'm seeing at the table of the mill. All right, now I've already run the y-axis all the way back, so my little piece of aluminum is against the column here. And um, I don't really think I've lost any travel there. The bellows compresses down there, and when I originally set up that angle to protect the scale on the backside, why well, I took that into the count. So that's very similar to what it is. So we're going to consider that our zero, and then we're going to come out. I just want to measure what our travel is now, and then I'll show a couple things that I think can, can improve upon that. And let's just roughly take this shank as a as our pointer here for what we've got. Part of the problem that I originally saw with this is we could get clear to the front of the table, but when we advance our y-axis out, we can't utilize all of that. So if we just run this all the way out, and I've already pulled my scale off of the y-axis. I did a little uh, Mickey Mouse setup to be able to, to utilize that scale and we still couldn't utilize the, the full travel. Oh, I've got bracketry hanging there. Um, we still couldn't utilize it, but it didn't damage the scale with what we had. So there's, our, there's the extent of our travel right there. So if we just put us a hunk of tape down here, actually that's probably not the way to put that tape. So let's turn it the other way. We center that up so that we basically got a got our y-axis travel we're out as far as it'll go. So then if we bring it down, it comes to right about there. So there's the extent of our travel at that point in time. I think there's two things that we can improve upon with this. So we end up with about 11 and a quarter inches of travel there. So we mark that at 11 and 1 quarter. Should just write it on the table or it won't make a bit of difference. Now one of the things that was pointed out to me, and I consider this to be a design flaw. Let's see if this will come in here. We know what that travel is. Let's see if we can zoom this in a little bit. Okay, so we know what that travel is. One of the things that was pointed out to me is that the knob right here is what actually interferes with the bottom of the table. So we're contacting the table right there. So now, I don't know how well that shows underneath all this stuff, but I consider that a design flaw because if we loosen that so this will spin or even take it out entirely, like that, why well, we can run our table back out. And now we come to right there. So at that point, We gained another just over three quarters of an inch of travel right there. And that's where it hits there. But now we're hitting our limit switch here. So I don't know how much more we've got. Let's see if we measure that out from the column. Now we're out to 12. So yeah, we've got three quarters of an inch more travel there. But now with our table stop set there, if we were to move it out of the way, I don't know how much more travel we'll get out of that by having that not in the proper position. Now, I do like that stop as a safety feature, but by the same token, since I'm the only one running it, I don't really think it's necessary. And I think also that if a person was 
careful about doing it. Let's just take that off of there and see what that gains us. If you're careful about doing it, I think you could probably reposition that switch. And uh, if necessary, and you can get some more travel out of it. So if we just put that switch out of the way. Now there's going to become a point where we're going to lose support or we're going to run out of lead screw. And I'm not sure which is going to be, well, there's, there's the end of our travel right there. So we can come clear out to there. And it looks like that gains us another half an inch. Yeah. So that's 12 and a half. So we've 12 and a half to there. So our actual travel of the table is going to be eight and right at three quarters of an inch that we get out of that, as opposed to having all the other stuff on there where it was down to about seven and a half. Now I don't know what the, I don't remember what the specs are for the table travel on that, but um, I know that that eight and three quarters has got to be quite a bit more than what we had. So if we've got eight and three quarters, let me get out the paperwork on this and let's see what they uh, actually say that it is. All right, so according to the data sheet for the G0755, they show the y-axis travel to be seven and seven eighths of an inch. So we've, uh, we've got it up to eight and three quarters. So I guess they're not exaggerating what the specifications are for it to start with, because if we go back to, to where we originally were for travel, which would be right there, we end up with seven and a half. So that's uh, three eighths of an inch less than what they say you should have, but with a couple of quick little, not even modifications, if you just uh, set your machine up to where it will actually be able to utilize the travel that's there, why that's all you need. Um, where I run a, a, a digital readout, it's not really necessary for me to ha even have the nut on the, on the scale. But I think that if I were to take and just shorten this nut up, or this uh, little knob up to where we don't have as much engagement to where it was closer, I think there's probably clearance for it underneath there and still be able to get full travel. Um, you know, we'll, we'll play with this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at this limit switch and decide what it's, whether it's worth having on there. Do I want to give up that travel for it? It's a nice little safety feature, but I don't know that it's anything that that is really necessary for the applications that I use it for. You know, that gives me about an eighth and an eighth of an inch if I leave it on there. So um, we'll see. You know, more travel is always better as far as I'm concerned. All right, a couple more revelations. Now, I thought that if I shortened up the head on the little knurled knob that there would be clearance for, the, uh, for it to clear down here. There's not. Um, where this interferes with the saddle, it's still, even when it's down as short as you can get it and still have it lock, why it, uh, it interferes with the saddle when the saddle gets that farther, far forward. So a couple of ways to do it, actually three different ways that come to mind to do it. One could be to just use a Allen screw to lock it in position, which means you'd have to have an Allen wrench to do it. Another is to do one of the fancy little conversions with a friction on the inside, whether it's O-ring or something like that, to be just a, a friction lock on the on the knob so that we knew where it went. And um, the other would be if you had the machine apart, you could actually just take a die grinder or you could set it up on another mill table and you could mill a little bit of a relief in the front of that saddle. The saddle itself here has a about a 3 8 inch thick lip from the front uh, when it gets back underneath there about three-eighths of an inch why it steps up a, about a quarter of an inch So it could just be relieved right in there and that would take care of that problem. So that's the first one 
The other one that works out quite well, and I wasn't sure if it was going to work or not, was with this limit switch on the x-axis. That interferes with the hand wheel. Now, I have changed these hand wheels out. These were on my other milling machine, but the dimensions on them are so close to the, the factory handles that you'd run into the same interference problem. I kind of, I didn't take them off and change them, but I eyeballed them, and, and they're so close that it's not going to make any difference. So, the other thing I was able to do, and I've still got to finish this, I still need to drill and tap one hole, is the original mounting, let's get this back a little bit so it's out of the way, if you'll notice now this limit switch clears the hand wheel, and there's the end of our travel right there. So, Get this back out of the way a little bit. I don't know if you're going to be able to see with this limit switch. The two mounting holes for the limit switch, and they're mounted with this. There's two that holds the limit switch onto this plate, and then this plate mounts to the apron with um, two of these button head cap screws. Those, I would imagine, are about an M8. Um, and the two holes for those originally were right in the middle of, this, of the apron here in the saddle, and they went right here. The gib locks, which I don't have the, the handles on these, I just got, I had one gib lock, and I only left one in because I found that was sufficient. I had it in this hole right here, would have been just about here, and I just tightened it by hand if I wanted to lock the gib, and that was all that was necessary to hold it as, as much as I needed to hold it. So, anyway, the holes are drilled and tapped the same. I took the plate off, just moved it down here so that this hole has moved on down, and that moves it down about oh, three inches. So what I need to do is go back, pull this back off, and drill and tap another hole to match for this other button head. And I can mount my mounting plate with my limit switch right here. And with moving uh, the stops, there's enough adjustment on the table that I get full travel. And we can run this one down here. And we have enough table travel that way. Enough table travel going back the other way. And we get our full tail travel table without running out. Plus we've done away with the interference that we have right here. So a couple of simple things that would uh, would increase the travel of your y-axis. We're up to eight and three quarters of an inch there. And I'm happy with that. I'll, uh, well, like I say, I'll have to get a new scale ordered and get this. Oh, we're still up against the stock. Get that back a little bit. Okay, well that was relatively quick and easy, fairly painless, so I'm going to hook my scale back up for right now until I get a replacement scale, and um, then at some point here in the very near future I will make some changes to the, to the uh, scales that are on the hand wheels, and get our new scale on there, got to drill and tap one hole for the limit switch, and... Uh, that's about it. So there, if you've got a uh, G0755 or something similar, well, you want, might want to look at that, see if you can increase your table travel without uh, a whole lot of hassle, it looks like. So anyway, hopefully you found that interesting and useful.